my community-based epidemiology class, we go through a simulation that is a unfolding pandemic. The pandemic simulation um, involves uh, uh, a written scenario, and so they get an update on the written scenario each week. Um, it also involves some video um, and media photographs, pictures of things that would, would give them a sense of what they might be seeing and thinking about during that time. But there isn't an actual um, technical lab simulation part of it. It's just something I create through a discussion forum environment. And so students are working in groups and they are given information about a um, simulated outbreak that go, is at a global scale and have to make decisions within that context. And so the first week they have a limited number of vaccines available and how are they gonna distribute it within the personnel that they have to cover and how are they gonna cover the patients they have to cover making the vaccinations decisions that they have. And they need to reach consensus in their group about who they're gonna to choose to vaccinate. And then we come back together and we, I have a video recording where we um, talk about how those decisions were reached and what it means. So whatever decision you made, you have to think about what the consequences are to that, positive and negative. And then they get the next stage of the unfolding pandemic. And that involves, okay, now we have a shortage of ventilators. And how are we gonna triage which patients get those ventilators and which ones don't? And what are the ramifications for doing that? And how are we going to triage? And when are we going to change how we triage? Which is a very hard decision for people to make, particularly nurses. So sometimes we talk about the fact that healthcare personnel are not always very good at triaging in emergency situations because there's a checklist. And if you actually give that checklist to somebody who is the administrative support for the finance department and say, check these four things. Okay, is the person breathing? Yes. Does the person have a heart rate? Yes. Is the person bleeding? Yes. Okay, they go over here. But the nurse is going, okay, they're breathing, they have a heart rate, but they're, they're bleeding too badly and they have to go over here because they're more emergent. And so you're starting to make triaging decisions that, that become extremely complicated um, in those situations. So we don't triage particularly well in emergencies. So we deal with that part and what are the choices we're making and why are we making them? Um, and what happens because we've made those choices. And so then we come together again and so then they have a chance after that discussion, are you gonna change your decisions at all? At each point there is a discussion of what the groups each decided. And then there is a, would you change that now that we've talked about it? Would you change who you vaccinate? Which inevitably happens afterwards. Would you change who you're gonna give the vaccines or the ventilators to? Then they have continuing unfolding. So the following week, pandemics progressed even further. Um, we get uh, a decision maker who is not necessarily the person designated to appropriately make those decisions come down and say, this is what you're gonna do. Now what are you gonna do? So now these are new patients that have come in. Now you've got people on ventilators. Are you gonna have to take someone off to give it to somebody who's come in? That's a very different decision than are you gonna give it to someone or not? Um, we have a particular, the patients are designed to really make them ask themselves the questions about what happens when you do this or you don't that. So one of them is um, the patient that comes in as a, a new nurse from that unit who's exposed while working on that unit. And so most of the nurses will say, well, I wouldn't have wanted the ventilator. I would have said, give it to the child. That's not, you know. But when you do that in an emergency situation, you don't take care of your first responders. You don't have first responders to respond with. So it brings about this whole piece of what it means when you have to make those choices. And by the end, they become excessively stressed by the thought of having to make these choices, which is an important piece in and of itself because it's important to realize what it does to the staff to have to make those and that it shouldn't be the bedside person making those decisions. There should be an algorithm and they all go back and they look at where they're working and what it is and what it isn't and how they have, how many ventilators they have, how does it get triaged, who's gonna make those choices. And they come out of that experience, um, which unfolds over it's four weeks total, um, and they talk about it on their post-graduation surveys.